I recently covered Burrito, a pathing overlay add-on that's native to Linux and finally brings a viable pathing option to those who have, understandably, decided to ditch Windows these days. But Burrito is just for pathing, and as great as it is, there are still other Blitz HUD modules that just don't always have alternatives. Now, there are some tricks and workarounds to make Blitz HUD work on other platforms, or at least on Linux. But so far, they've only worked on specific window managers and still had some major compromises that made them work, but they weren't ideal. Here's the problem. Blitz HUD works by hooking to the Guild Wars 2 game window and drawing itself over top of it. It employs some Windows-specific hacks to handle mouse capturing and to make its canvas transparent, and all of this kind of falls apart when it's not, well, on Windows. But thanks to some recent work by a dev named Sari, we have a very clever tool that basically circumvents the whole overlay issue and allows Blitz HUD to work pretty dang seamlessly on Linux and even Mac OS. Sari has both a simple guide and a troubleshooting guide on his GitHub page, which I'll link in the description, and I definitely recommend checking them out, especially for the Steam instructions if that's your setup. But I'll show you what worked for me, so rather than bore you with further technical details, let's get into it. I'm going to start with important initial setup stuff. Blitz HUD is very picky about some of the runtimes it needs to operate, and a lot of times just getting it to even launch is the hardest part, at least it was for me. And that seems to stem from the mono package included with newer versions of Wine, which is surprisingly tricky to get around. I found it wasn't really possible to remove the mono package from an existing Wine prefix, so I made a new one using bottles. Give it a name, set it for gaming, and make sure to use Soda 9 as the runner. Once it's created, go into the bottle, and under Legacy Wine Tools, open up the uninstaller. Then uninstall the two mono packages. After those are gone, close this window, and then back over in Bottles, click the Dependencies section for your bottle. Scroll down, find .NET 48, and it has to be that exact one, and click the floppy icon next to it to install it. And this will take a long time to complete. With all that done, you can proceed to install Guild Wars 2 like normal. Assuming you already have an installation elsewhere, what I like to do is get the installation started, get it to the point where it's on the main launcher patching, and then close out of it. Then you can grab your Guild Wars 2 folder from elsewhere and just overwrite this one. If you want a clean install, but you don't want to wait for a fresh installation to patch, just grab the gw2.dat file and copy that over instead. It'll cover about 99% of what has to patch anyway. Click the menu button at the top and browse files to see the contents of your faux C drive for this bottle. At this point, it may be a good idea to launch Guild Wars and get in-game just to make sure it's working normally. I found Bottles' out-of-the-box setup to work pretty great every time, but nothing wrong with a sanity check. Now for Blish HUD. Follow the link to Sari's GitHub page in the description below, and on the releases page, download the zip file. Extract it, and you'll be left with an add-ons folder. Go ahead and copy that. Then navigate to the Guild Wars 2 folder in your bottle and paste that add-ons folder in here. This folder contains everything we need and it's already structured how we need it. In bottles, you'll see our shortcut to launch Guild Wars 2 normally already. Underneath that, click Add Shortcut and now navigate to that add-ons folder you just added. Inside there, open the Loader Public folder and select the Guild Wars 2 Simple Add-on Loader. So here's how this works. If you want to use Guild Wars 2 with Blish HUD, use this shortcut instead of the regular launcher. This will launch the game, then inject Sari's DX11 render hook into the game, and then it launches a modified version of Blish HUD, which talks to said render hook to draw the Blish HUD canvas in game. And that's basically it. Blish HUD should more or less work exactly like it does on Windows, regardless of what distro or window manager you're using. It even captures the mouse cursor properly, which was the biggest usability hangup I had with the older methods. Oh yeah, and you can add shortcuts to these to your desktop or app launcher if you want to. I did give this a shot on Mac OS 2, and it does work. Like in my previous video where I discussed running Guild Wars 2 on Mac and Linux, I'm using Whiskey here, which sadly isn't getting updates anymore, but it is free, and I don't expect it to just quit working anytime soon. The broad strokes of the setup process are largely the same as they are on Linux. I created a new bottle, then in the bottle settings, you can pop the Wine control panel and uninstall Mono. Then use Wine Tricks to install the .NET 48 package under the DLLs tab. This will take forever, but hey, you can watch some cryptic terminal messages to help pass the time. When that's all done, go ahead and run the Guild Wars 2 installer, and you will have to actually download the client installer like you would on Windows. No biggie, just download it and go through the install process like normal. 
I didn't have a patch copy of the game on this computer, so I just let it patch to playable, and then I fired it up to get in game. By the way, if Guild Wars 2 crashes after launching, go back into the bottle settings and turn on DXVK. No idea why it's off sometimes, and I actually did turn it on initially, but it turned itself back off at some point. We know the game works now, so just like before, you're just going to drop Sari's add-on folder into the Guild Wars 2 game folder. I also went ahead and pinned Sari's launcher, though it wasn't until I closed and reopened Whiskey that it showed, but go ahead and launch it, and that's it. As you can see, performance wasn't great for me here, but this was on a MacBook Air, which is not exactly a sweaty gaming machine. On the newer Mac Mini or Studio models, you'll likely see way better performance, so your mileage may vary there, but hey, concept proven. Now, this whole thing is fairly bleeding edge, so while my initial impressions have been great, expect stuff to break. Off the top of my head, I know the events table module is troublesome, and apparently sound coming from Blishhud doesn't work, so if you need the under to see module to play Guild Wars 2, you're out of luck there. Sorry. But if you have any trouble, I would really strongly recommend checking out the Linux channel on Blish's Discord, which I'll also link below. There are lots of people on there who are way smarter than I am and have been super helpful. Just remember, devs like Sari are doing this entirely for free, so please remember to stay kind and respectful when asking for help. I hope you found this video helpful, and I do take donations in the form of likes and subscribes. And as always, thanks for watching.